The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Monday, the 28th of August, wrapping up the month of August. In a couple of days, we're looking at the Dow up 241 at 34,588. Everything I looked at over the weekend suggested that there should be some kind of a relief rally, but probably more in a sideways uh, consolidation before we see the next move, and maybe it's the next move down. I'm not sure how much higher we can go. Uh, yes, you can have a rally. We're at 34,591 uh, in the Dow. I don't see any reason why you couldn't actually get to the 34,800s. And then we'll have to see if there's internal strength. So that weekly is still very strong sell mode in the daily. Although uh, I, I have no qualms looking at the long side of the Dow just in the very short term, even though we are still short from the August 1st high. Um, you've got to be ready for bounces, but that would only be a really quick trade. And that's it. Looking at the S&P, S&P at this particular point is up uh, 24 at 4,430. Uh, it's the same thing. You can just see this here. It's basically, so far, it looks like a sideways consolidation. Uh, the, the technicals are all weighted to the downside of this particular point. QQQ, same thing, uh, up $1.84 at $365.90. There is a little bit more rotation there going on, so you can get wilder swings, but still, the three, we're at $365. I would say the 371 area is going to be a real test for strength if there is strength in the S&P. That weekly chart is still strong, but the technicals are starting to fail one by one, not the 914. That's still very, very positive. Looking at the um, IWM, and this is going to be a very big test. Can we continue? We, we, we see this all the time in the Russell 2000. It's terrible, terrible. And all of a sudden, it has a really strong couple of days, and it looks like, well, maybe the maybe the small caps, the iShares Russell 2000 ETF with the small caps is going to come into play. So far, that has, hasn't happened. Now, all, a, a bunch of things happen at the same time because you need to have Probably you need to, it isn't as um, influenced by rates as some, some other areas, but it certainly does have some kind of contingency there because you've got those financials, that, you know, the small, smallest financials there in the Russell. So I would just say that um, if the Russell was starting to move, I also have to have a look at the XLF and so far, kind of avoided that area for a while, quite a while. Um, and that has been XLF. There we go. That's the major S&P Select Financial uh, Spider Fund. And here we are. The nine period moving average is still pink under the 14. It's tested the 200 period moving average, moved, pushed a little bit up away from it. The MACD is starting to improve, but it's still negative. Stochastic starting to improve, but it's still under 20%. The on balance uh, volumes had a little bit of a balance. The weekly chart remains with the green. Nine period exponential moving average, meaning that it's still kind of it's in an uptrend, but it's under pressure. That's what IBD would say. It's under pressure. That's what I'm looking at right now. But the technicals are not that bad. So it says how we start September is going to be important because if it's held above 34, uh, no, sorry. If it's held above 33.50, it's at 34.28 right now, and the financials are able, the XLF is able to start to trade, not can't just touch it and then fail, but can actually start to trade in the 34.75, 35.10 area. That would be a really good sign. It hasn't done that for quite a while. So that would be a good sign. The KRE, uh, that's the S&P Regional Bank, Banking ETF, uh, still negative. All the technicals are negative. Uh, it needs at 44.61 up 97 cents. Well, at least 2.22 percent. That's not bad. Uh, you would have to see this in the 46.50 area and holding there. Can't just go there once, and it needs to go there and hold. And I say, hey, there is some strength left in that in the regional banks sector. Let's just go on. We want to look at the. Um, this is one at a time. Gold. So gold is trading up seven, starting to see some, some 
turning around, the stochastic has gone from under 20% from the, the teen, under under the teens, in fact, in single digits, to over 20%, and now it's trading at 45.95. That's a good sign. On balance volume is very weak. The MACD is strengthening. It's cross positive. The uh, where are we here? We're looking at the pink nine period moving average still way underneath the 14 period moving average. And that just says to me, gold is finding some play at this particular point. Um, you might find I don't like to type this in. I do that every once in a while, but it's a, it gets it's a rolling contract. In other words, the price that I have now, it could be a different price in a week's time with a new month starting. But the low was 1913.6 on the 21st of August. Um, and the way it's looking right now, with lower lows and lower highs in the weekly chart, a move in gold, they can actually get to the 1960s at any point this week would be very impressive action. As it stands, it looks to me like it's just chopping sideways. There could be one little slide into the 1920, 1915 area. That would be on a short-term basis really important to hold. If you're looking at silver, which is at a way better uh, chart formation, up 0.04 right now, 24.28. Uh, this is, look at this, a strong move to the upside has no, you know what? That was a C. Let me just double check here. 24.430 and 24.44. This is a leg C. Oh, I don't like leg Cs to fail so quickly after a B without making a strong leg C. So let's just watch this. Very good action so far. Nicely way above the nine period moving uh, above the 200 period moving average. The nine has gone positive over the 14. The MACD is expanding. It's good. Stochastic's flat at 90.81 percent. That's what I like to see. And the other thing is that in this pattern, that sometimes a dreaded H, that's the lowercase H. Let me just do that right now. Can go to uh, it goes it goes below the left side low, but then closes above it. If the technical starts to really improve. And the price actually takes out the arch high. In this case, for silver, it would be the high of 25, 40, 47, uh, the week of the 21st of July. If it's able to, it doesn't have to even close. Go above that, preferably close, but go above that. In this particular phase, it says, you know, it could go all the way to the 20, 26, uh, 50, 20, almost 27 level. That was the high back in April. But let's do one thing at a time. The, the nine is still negative in the weekly chart, positive in the daily, positive in the weekly, in the monthly. So that's the weekly chart is the one that really has to change. If it does that, you're looking at something quite extraordinary that <clears throat> the strength of the silver SLV is the uh, ETF for those of you who don't get the futures contract. Here you can see it a lot clearer. It's broken above the chat wave, a falling axe and inside track uh, technique, the tools that I use. For four sessions, it gapped up and it hasn't broken under that trend line. That's in the daily, the MACD, the everything's positive. The weekly chart is just today, flipped L. That's uh, long, but you can't go less than an hour into the new week and call the weekly chart uh, nine period moving average 40 crossover positive. You have to wait for Friday. So that's a good sign. I'll be back. The Dow's at 242, S&P's at 23.76. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, so I was just asked if I could quickly go through the uh, E-mini uh, S&P futures. So look, in the 10-minute chart, <clears throat> you remember the, the pattern that I always talk about, that rectangle pattern, a long rectangle pattern. I have uh, techniques that I've developed over the years that describe in detail, um, let me f see if I can find right here, what happens if you get a long, narrow rectangle Oh, and, and just uh, let me just say, uh, this is pertains to a sideways move between parallel trend lines, meaning you've got a horizontal line and another horizontal line making a channel, but this is sideways and it's long and it's narrow. There are a whole bunch of rules, and the rule basically says in the channel wave methodology, if after a long period of time you suddenly pop above this trend line to a D or an E, and then pull back and take out the halfway marker of the rectangle high and low, there's a real good chance you're going to take, you're going to touch the bottom line, maybe this time take it out and then pop back in and that's where other things can happen. But if it stays in that rectangle for a long time, doesn't pop out on the upside or the downside, if it takes out the upside, You've got to be prepared that you're now looking at this as new support. The whole thing is new support because it's, it's found a different level. In other words, the tide on the very short term has changed to an up tide, rising tide. The large rectangle has a different connotation altogether. I can talk about that, but let's talk about this right now because this is what it pertains to. Sideways, look, between uh, about 40, uh, 44, 27 and 44, uh, 12 or 13 it just got it stayed there from from friday all the way through sunday night into early monday morning and then look what happened pop oh no 827 828 now what am i talking about mm -mm. it was no it was friday right friday, friday was it yeah it was friday and then what happens is it breaks out and it goes in the chapel. If you're always looking for a peak D or an E, and that's kind of where you want to say, yeah, what's going to happen right now? Well, there's your peak D uh, at about 11 a.m. It was on Friday. It pulled back. Remember that sudden sharp slide? I forgot to tell subscribers that on Thursday I had a very low Chapman Wave trend gauge reading, and that should say whatever the futures do, even if they're up sharply, be prepared that we could go negative intraday, which is exactly what we did. And then there was a sharp rally. 
look sideways and then it breaks out. It goes peak A, B, C, D. It's gone to the D. Uh oh. Oh, but wait a minute. The nine is still way over the 14. Nothing to worry about just yet. Still acting very well. Okay, so that's I hope that helps you on a very short term basis. We made a peak C1, C2. We've gone sideways. It could still go a little higher than this. It's even a C3. Um, it's holding very nicely. I mean, we were kind of oversold on a short term basis. Plus, you got end of month, a lot of things going on. So let's just go back here. So the SLV I said was holding very nicely. Just wanted to finish up here to say uh, bonds. This is bonds look going all the way down to the left side low, but it, it's better to see it in the 20 year Treasury bond fund. 91.85 was the low back in October, the tw a week of the 28th of uh, October 2022. 92.23 was the, the low five sessions ago, six sessions ago, <clears throat> four, four, five, six sessions ago last week. And um, it started to look, the stochastic rallied a little bit. The on balance volume is still very negative. MACD is expanding upwards, but um, it, a lot has to happen before it can, before you can see follow through to the upside. But I have to call this gray leg B in the daily chart because it did make a slightly higher high uh, today. I'm looking at this and I'm saying there's a lot going on because, as I said to subscribers to my opening call, the HGX index, that's the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, um, did a Roman candle low on Friday. That's this particular candle right here, a red one, with three, two, uh, five, two, four, 32 low. If in the next two sessions it's able to close nicely above the high of Friday, 548.54 was the high. If it's able to do that, then those Toll Brothers, they might hold up a little bit longer. And we listen, we need to see whether the yields are going to help. Because if the heels start to come down, you might get a, a pretty nice bounce in these uh, home builders. And that's going to be very important. Okay. So I see some inner strength in this, the first kind of this opening gambit of the week. And then we're going to test strength. But the SMH is absolutely imperative to monitor. Stuck up a dollar oh five at one uh, fifty point fourteen. Uh, this is going to be very interesting. And we remain, we remain short. Um, the SMH. So now I've got, got some questions. So this is going to be very interesting. Question on RKT. This is Rocket. RKT. Talking about Rocket. Don't forget, Tommy O'Brien has great newsletter called Rocket Options. And oops, Rocket Options. I shouldn't have said that until I absolutely remembered exactly. Uh, newsletter. And uh, he, yeah, he does great work with looking at options, etc. Anyway, so this is Rocket. With a Chapman Wave flat base restart, which I said way back here on that big rally, that if I'm correct about identifying this particular pattern, I usually make it pink so that everything goes together pink there. Then you've got your pink uh, sideways move. Now, let me just put this out. I would normally measure it. So there to the – this is a little bit conservative. I could be a little more aggressive. I'll sort of – no. Yes, I'll start off just a little bit more aggressive, and I'll say go to that doji candle there. So there's a chance that with the gyrations that we're looking at right now, that this very, very nice move from under 9 to almost 12 in this last, I mean, 30% rally is fabulous. We could see, and this is going to be the big question for me, how does this play out over the next couple of, uh, um, I'd, I'd put it in the next two weeks, more than just the next couple of, yeah, not days. I, I need a couple of weeks. Look, it's, it's now struggling a little bit. This particular pattern says that it should come back and test the 10 round number low that was made on the 3rd of August. When this is finished, how it comes out of it and comes back towards the 11s is going to be really important because if in the month of September, certainly by the second week of September, it's touched 11.05, 11.12, just gets into the 11s, then you've got another cup formation. And that's going to, I wouldn't say defeats the purpose of the Chapman Wave flat base restart after all. It, it came all the way back down 
to the uh, 10.13, just 13 cents away. It pretty much accompanied a lot of what I would look at in the Chapman Wave flat base restart. Now, even more important, what we're looking at is the monthly chart, the 9 is still way over the 14. So the weekly chart, the tide is still pretty strong. Monthly chart has improved. It's gone to a leg B. So this is Rockets Companies. Um, is this the financial? Can you uh, just, if you could just tell me if that's, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure yet. In fact, I thought I looked at it and typed it in. I just, I do the break. I'm going to have a look. So Rockets comes, he does. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mortgage, real estate, financial service businesses. Okay, well, I, nothing that I said changes it. It's in a trading band, and watch how it tests 10. That's the that's big thing here. I'll be back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yeah, so uh, a couple of questions came in. And I'll just get to them as well. So uh, VNO is Vonado Realty Trust. It's up 76 cents at 22.78. Uh, I like this cup formation that's forming. I think it will go to a leg D, and that'll be above the uh, 22.78 high. Oops, 23.78 high that was made a few weeks ago. 
And then you're going to have to see, because the MACD is still very weak. It came back sharply. Stochastic fell from way over 80% down to under 20%, down to 47%, and the on-balance volume is weak. So I, if this is a position that you already have, I say just hold it. Don't fold it. I, I mean, I, this is not where I want to mess with the, something that you've been because it gets. You know, people are going to realty trusts, people who own who build the realty trust. They understand real estate. They understand finance. And um, as long as things are working well, they get the dividend. They get all sorts of things. So it's a different kettle of fish. And so I'm not going to mess with this other than to say at any point in September, if it closes under 19.50, it's a 22.81 right now, then there's a little problem, and then I would have to say take a little bit off, keep a core position, but take a little bit off. So you say, well, why not two or three points higher, take a little bit off? I'd wait just a little bit. Let's see if it can retest the high that was made just under 24. And then, in fact, I can just tell you right now, for money management purposes, not a bad idea if it can get between so 22.78. If it can get between 23 and 20. 3.76 over 76 cents. I wouldn't make too much of a fuss. I'd say, yeah, take a little bit off for money management purposes because even if it gets to that D, the way the daily chart is acting, it looks like the next thing in, in the phase is going to be choppy. And if it gets to it, that's it'll be an E slash maybe a B in, in that phase. But in the daily chart, a weekly chart, it'll be a leg D. And right there, looking at it just on a purely technical level, says, don't mess with your core position, but on a very short-term basis, maybe you can think, maybe you can wait, and if it does that in the next day or two, give me a yell, we'll look at it together. But at this point, it's acting very well. Um, CCJ is a question. No, no, I have to do the one that I got over the weekend. Xpeng, or what I, I was talking about it the other day. Uh, G A X. Oh, man. E P E N. No, no. Why? Why is it just slipping my mind here? No, no. Jeez. Oh no. E. Uh, wait. I wrote it down. Didn't I write it down? And I also had the same trouble the other day. Oh, I'm gonna have to memorize this one. Xpeng. No, I'm not getting it. it. Was a Chinese car company? Someone can give me a hand here. Um, I've got it in front of me. I'm um, looking at Spang, Spang, Spang. Someone's going to do that for me. We've got this, all these great people in the den. They'll, they'll, they'll let, it, let me know because I had it down. X P E N. X P E N. No, it's not there. There's a G there somewhere. All right. Well, I can't find it. Um, and I've got, I'll, I'll, in the next break, I'll get it. I don't know why I, I've written it down now. I can't find the email. Uh, so I'll, I'll get that. But it was acting. Quite nicely, and I oh I I know where I can find it. X P N G. Uh, right here, right here. I got a question about it. I, I know I most probably won't find it there either, so I'm not going to mess around. So let's just do this because a couple of questions have come in that are really pertinent to where we are right now, and you can see I, I can't help but start looking for this thing. No, I won't. Uh, news. Yeah, so within the context of NEO is coming out with earnings. So these are the uh, these are the Chinese uh, automobile companies. NEO is one of them, um, and I'm just going to say to you, it looks to me from the chart formation that they will have another big move to the upside. This V shape, inverted V shape pattern says. It's just a two carried away. It's underneath the 200 period moving average. If it has a really good earnings report, I think it's tomorrow afternoon after the bell, maybe not, then no, it isn't BYD, but I'll have a look at it. And it wasn't BYD, it's BYD D, I think it is, or something like that. That's uh, Boyd, XPEV. Ah, thank you. I knew, I knew one of our. Dennis with XPV, of course, there it is. So XPV, this is what you see, Neo, the way it made this move here. But now um, there's financing and a whole bunch of things came in for XPeng, design, uh, develops, manufactures smart EVs. That's a nice move to the upside, this cup formation. And just today, 
he went back to L, the nine period over. But look, the Magdi is only now trying to turn up. Stochastic's turning up. So this is in a different area altogether. You can't put it together with four. Look at four. What a terrible chart that is. Look at General Motors. Uh, gah, gah, gah. Uh, this is not great. This is different. These are the stocks that are. I don't know if they do anything else but the electric vehicles. So that makes them very different. And you have to look at them in that light. Because if I do it, look, there it is. Look at Tesla. Tesla had the same sharp move down, the same test, in this case, of the 200 period moving average. And you had a peak A and today's making a peak B, but not a very strong one. So I'm just going to, the way I'm looking at the chart, I have to say, that I think uh, um, GT sent us something about uh, call options on Xpeng. And because of that, I'm going to say that's the best way to play it. And you do it as something that you know exactly what your uh, risk is and you can, you've got control. You know exactly what you can lose. You know that the gain, you can leave it open, let it just run. So that's very different. So I like that and I like the idea that um, in this particular sector, go for the pure electrics because they're the ones, if they're going to work, they're going to work really well. The, the more complex things like a Ford GM, so other things have to happen. Though they've got strikes coming up. There are all sorts of things going on. All right. With that said, uh, where was the other thing I was going to look at here? It was Okay, B, I did this. BYD is something. That's Boyd. I think that's the um, gaming company. Yeah. Boyd had a sharp move. It almost looks like a, an EV here right now. Comes sharply down from the 73s, and it goes down to the 200 period moving average. It too has a peak A, and it's trying for a B, all within just a, a bounce kind of phase. BYD, BYD, is that how you get it? BYD, D. I think I get it the same way. I'm going to go B, Y, D, D, F. Let's see what comes up. Yes, sirree. So this is Boyd Company. Oh, no, BYD Company. It's not got nothing to do with Boyd. Boyd Company, a limited a Chinese company. And uh, it's done very well. It's also had the same sharp pullback. The actual chart looks a little better. And as I understand, everything that I've read says that they are really one of the more mature companies and they've been in around uh, in a long time. They make enough a variety of vehicles and they are I, I think that they are money making I don't think they keep making losses I think they are now money making this is a different chart formation this is the one that I actually favor but we don't have anything in this category right now but this is the one that has the best story that I've read so far and that is BYD BYDDF is the symbol I'll be right back Rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. There was a little double top in the E-mini right there, and uh, now it is under the nine-period moving average in the 10-minute chart, and the, re and the daily chart has made this arch formation. So the 4-4, I'm just going to say right now, 4-4-3-2 is going to be key support in this first part of the, well, the second part of the trading day, the 10-20 time frame. Uh, we'll see what happens here. But so far, it's actually done quite nicely. So a question came in about... Uh, CCJ, that's Chemico Corporation, uranium fuel. Monthly chart uh, is in the G slash B. It's still looking really strong. Uh, all the technicals are doing well. Exactly the same thing in the weekly, except that here the stochastic, instead of being at 83% like the monthly, is at 93.99%. That is fabulous. I love the And flat. Stochastic flat is what you look for. for. For stochastic popping just for a couple of bars and then going back under 80%, uh -uh. That's, that's, that's where you can see a sharp sell-off. And look at the daily. So this is a leg D. And because it's a leg D, what I'm, I'm going to say is the reason why for subscribers to my opening call, we took a little bit, just a tad off a uranium stock, which has done really well. We took about a maybe 17% gain off this, this little bit that is that um, it's getting just a little tired, just purely technically. That's not to say it's looking like it wants to drop sharply. It just says uh, this is the appropriate time to put some money management. That's all. Uh, where would I add back anything that I took off now in CCJ? Just give it a little while. If it closes under the candle of Friday, which is 35.15, uh, then just wait a tad because right in this just about 34, perhaps a little under 34 is where I'd be looking at it to say, is it making an arch formation or is this where you're going to get another, where the nine period moving average is still very strong. Therefore, you want to get in uh, for the next big bounce. So that's what I would do. Just a tad off and then I would try to add. And now as we're looking at, um, as we're looking at the, uh, let me just go back here. Because the IAI broker dealer ETF question came in. When when do you want to get into the uh, add to your position from 45 in the broker dealer uh, and security ETF? Well, look at this. This is gray A, gray because the technicals are still very weak. Gray B, it has gone uh, in this last iteration to the upside from the 85s to uh, just about 98. And then what happens is it comes back and now it's testing the 200 period moving average. And this is telling me that all is not 100% in the market right now. This, this digester phase needs to go on a little longer. So I'm just going to say, hold off. There are some stocks um, in the, um, how can I put it? Look, Schwab, pull back very sh Schwab, pull back very sharply. Broker, dealer, S-C-H-W. 
And um, yeah, it's way under the 200 period moving average. The pink is under the 14, and price is under all of them. I think you could have little balances, but look at that. And that pattern that I'm looking at right now is exactly like the pattern. Oh, Rivian. A question came in about Rivian. Rivian seems to me, it, it looks like a fabulous car company and all that, trucks. I mean, they, you always identify them on the road. Um, not so much the SUVs, but certainly those trucks. And at the same time, the, the chart itself, just like Schwab right now, the chart is saying there seems to be something not quite right. Uh, maybe it's financially, maybe it's income, maybe it's expenses, maybe whatever it is. And look, Rivian, keep your eye on the middle chart, the weekly chart in the middle, R-I-V-N. And doesn't look the same. And Rivian, to me, had 149 high back in November, the I IPO month of 2021. Had a little bit of a tumble to 11.68 uh, back in uh, April. And now, and then had a really, I mean, more than doubled because it went all the way to the 2026s. Uh, sevens maybe and now what is it doing it's pulling back and that just says to me if it's doing so well this this spike should have held much better it should have held it should have held above 2430 and here it is going down to the 20.23 area even 22 the 200 period moving average so it says to me rivian is in that area that, that they might be great i wouldn't be surprised if the cars, are, remember when I used to say, I wouldn't be surprised if a Tesla, each Tesla is being sold at a loss of eighty or sixty thousand dollars each, and then it, it whittled away and got better and better. I'm now going to say to you, I wouldn't be surprised if Rivian is each car costs them a fortune. Um, yeah, so within that context, let's just see what happens because. Um, I would love to see Rivian succeed. I love all these guys to succeed because, you know, electric vehicles, it's really uh, the, the competition right now is saying to people who want to buy electric, you're yeah, kind of overpaying, and I'd like to see that even out. But I'm also going to add that if you think that um, United States of America, with its history of energy, success and failures, is going to have pure just pure success with electric i don't i just don't i don't see the history for that i see the history of a bumpy ride and at some point you're going to have people with these evs and you're just not going to be able to charge them or alternating charges on a, every three days or whatever it is it's going to happen i'm sure as, as sure as i'm sitting here uh, that's the way i think it's going to work but we are moving once you've set the trajectory up and you've got the government pushing like crazy, it means that you've speeded up everything, the technology and everything else. And therefore, that will be, there's no question that the uh, gas-driven automobiles, you're going to see fewer and fewer and fewer. And then there'll be a phase where because electric vehicles are troublesome or whatever it is, or people can't get, you know, you go to your gas station right now, even if there's a line, 15 minutes and you're out of there, if there's no line, as long as it takes you to fill up five minutes, you're out, in, out. And in this particular instance, you're talking about people lining up, and that also is going to affect Tesla, because Tesla vehicles are going to be sharing now with everyone else, or at least with a bunch of other companies. So those lines are going to be long. And now what they're going to talk about the danger of the cars in, in traffic because they can't, uh, they can't, it's just, it's going to be an issue. They've got that in Cambridge, Mass. They've got some guy who put a, uh, asked for a permission to put his little extension that goes from his house to his car with a little bridge, a little tiny kind of a, um, a cover on the street so the pipe can go right through. Uh, what is that? We're going to see everywhere you go. All of a sudden, you're going to get these things, and then what's for snow shoveling? What are you going to do? You got a, a, it breaks it. Who's responsible? There are a lot of things going on, and obviously, we're talking about an early, the very early stage of a trend. But in the early stages, that's where you want to try to resolve beforehand problems that could come up. This is not the way we work around here. We always work under crisis management. All right, with that said, the Dow's up 220, got a little thing, got it out of my system here. Um, 
so the question came in and I should go to right now before we go to the break uh, G-O-E-V that's right I forgot all about that I should make a note of. I do have a note of look at the rest G-O-E-V that's go E-V and that's the same kind of pattern and look at the basing on the, in the weekly chart it's just it's kind of struggling I'll be back in a moment guys will check and take it from You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Your left side right side price time map from the loaded of the space of the E-mini at 9 and 51 was the low to that low right there at 9.53. All I did was I clicked this once, I doubled it so I can click it again, change the color to pink, and it's one bar late in getting to that level on the arch formation. So the question came in, I, I'll talk about, I, I've spoken about it so many times over the years about the automobiles and about the 1930s that here in Boston and the Boston area, all around the country, you had dozens and dozens, there might've been even over 100 Automobile companies in the 19, uh, late 20s and early early 30s before the depression really took hold. So we'll talk about that with the period that we're in right now. I've spoken about it so many times. So within that context, let me just do a couple of things real quickly here. There's a question came in. So Basil, are you are you still long? Are you what are you doing? So we are still short the Dow from the August 1st high in the Dow. That's the very day of the high. We're still short the SMHs. We're looking to add. 
to that short position. The SMH is under certain conditions, and the SOXS, we're out of that. Pity we didn't get back in, but we're out of it for now. That's the three times short. We hope to get in. We're looking to short the, the home builders under certain conditions because there is still some internal strength. So the tide on the daily chart, let me just go through this right now as we're about to run out of time. Then you go to Great Program. Steve Rose kicks us off for the next segment and with Great Program with all the other technical analysts. So in this particular context, the daily went to a sell mode. I said I cannot wait until Friday's close to see whether the weekly – I have to wait until Friday's close to see if the weekly charts got upgraded even to a sell signal. They have done that, even the S&P, the Dow, but the QQQ is not acting like it should. So, but the day, all the daily charts are in sell modes. The weekly charts have held extremely well, and we'll have to see what happens this Friday. So that's what I'm saying on the shorter term, still negative. The intermediate term, I haven't got signals yet to say.